Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? So, I did promise I'd keep you updated if there was any interesting news relating to Fallout 76 that came out of QuakeCon this weekend. And we have a Q&A done by a couple of the developers on the game with the team in the Netherlands, the community team over there. So we've got a little bit more detail about the things we already knew were coming later on in the year, but some cool information nonetheless. And a couple of updates on the ongoing saga following patch 21 regarding uh, the camp walls thing and uh, one of the other fixes they've worked on as well. So let's jump into this, shall we? Okay then, so there's a few people who've said that their reactions to QuakeCon so far have been a bit on the uh, disappointed side, and I kind of understand that, but at the same time, I'm not hugely surprised we haven't had a vast amount of new stuff relating to 76. Back at the beginning of summer, obviously, they produced their roadmap going forward, and it basically covers everything they're going to be doing, at least on a, a relatively high level kind of um, scale anyway, for the next period of months, probably up until about March of next year. So it's a good chunk of time, all the major upcoming content we kind of already know about. I wasn't massively expecting any profound news. We've got a few cool new details here that's worth having. However, before we jump into this little Q&A that uh, Jeff Gardner, who's the project lead on Fallout 76, and the lead designer, whose name now escapes me, but we'll get back to that in a moment, <laughs> do apologise for that, um, did yesterday, we will uh, just touch on a couple of issues from this week in particular. So first and foremost, update on replacing walls in camps. Earlier Bethesda got back to us and basically said that the changes they made were intended to deal with some exploits and some negative behaviour going on in the game and they weren't going to revert them for that reason. I think there's been a bit of a communication issue inside of Bethesda here on this one, which is probably not that remarkable given that they're working from home and it was a quite a quick reaction and these things happen. Clearly they need to work on it, but uh, it is what it is. The update that we've got uh, yesterday coming from Valseek on the forums, who is one of the community managers, that says, Hi everyone, we've got an update for you about some of the recent camp changes made in patch 21. After investigating community reports, we've determined that the inability to replace walls with doorway walls, and presumably vice versa, was an un unintended side effect of some of the other changes we made in the patch. We're actively working on a fix for this to restore your ability to replace walls in this way as soon as we can. The fix we're working on is still in progress, but we should have another update next week. Cool. So, in short, the, what I suspect has gone on here is that um, obviously the community team have passed our extensive feedback to the devs who have obviously said, well, we made these changes because we needed to, but hadn't realised that the community were actually referring to an unintentional side effect. Now they've actually looked into it in more detail, they've gone, oh, that's what you meant, okay, right. So this is what's happened, this is the situation. Which is, yeah, it's kind of a symptom of the fact that they're stuck working from home, which, uh, based on what Jeff Gardner has said in this Q&A we'll have a look at in a sec, is likely to persist for some time yet. And uh, I don't suppose that will come as a massive surprise to anybody. But, uh, yeah, it does make some communication issues a natural uh, part of things. Obviously, cross-departmental communication is always an extra failing point anyway, so not just uniquely to Bethesda. So I think that's what's gone on here, is that... Um, there's been a little miscommunication, and now they've actually nailed it down. It's like, right, okay, so the thing you're actually talking about wasn't part of the plan, which is basically means the devs didn't realise that they'd caused this problem uh, initially, and I've only found out when we've gone, what the bloody hell are you playing at? So, um, this is great news. I mean, it's not good that uh, this situation has arisen in the first place. I think we'd all prefer it if it hadn't. But now that they've turned around and said, okay, now we're with you, we're on the same page, um, yeah, this wasn't the plan, so we're going to fix it. That's great to hear. The other good news is, obviously, you guys know that um, a colossal problem was in the patch on Tuesday, but has not yet been activated because they're still working on some performance stuff. Obviously, to implement those performance changes, they're going to have to add a hotfix, which gives them an opportunity to piggyback on that, the reversion, assuming they've got it ready in time, and other things as well that they might want to tweak and adjust and fix from uh, that somewhat um, dud of a patch. So hopefully, within the next fortnight or so, we should see some significant steps in the right direction, some stuff being sorted. Hopefully. I mean, watch this space. We'll obviously have to wait until we find out exactly what's going on. So uh, that is what it is. But uh, things are looking up a little bit, which is good to hear. So on to the next thing. 
A uh, few people have mentioned the Cheating Death quest, and it was called Carlton Mine, which is one of the raider quests added in Wastelanders, has had some issues recently. And uh, the devs have deployed a hotfix that should make this uh, no longer a problem. So, the post on the forums that I unfortunately missed, but have now found, is that we addressed the hotfix for Fallout 76 to address an issue introduced in Update 21 that was preventing players from progressing the quitting the cheating death quest. We did not need to take the game offline to do this. While the hotfix was underway, you may have been asked to leave your current world and join another. The hotfix has now been applied to all game worlds, so if you're previously unable to enter Carlton Mine during the cheating death quest, you can now proceed with that quest normally. So, not quite sure what's going on here, some issue somewhere, but um, it has now been fixed. Fortunately, not a uh, challenging one if it's been done this quickly. It's actually, as I say, a couple of days ago now, Friday, I think, that they actually did this. So, Thursday. Thursday they did this. So, uh, yeah, good to see that they've actually been able to do that. So that's great news. That quest should be rolling on just as intended. So let's jump on to the Q&A. So as I say, this um, was done with the Netherlands team in uh, within Bethesda. It's a conversation with a couple of the devs. And it has some really, really cool stuff in it. It's nothing profoundly new, but there's a few details and a, bit, a few bits of confirmation that are really nice to have and a, a little bit more of a what's going on in Bethesda's heads collectively about the stuff that is coming over the next few months. So the first big piece of information, and uh, before I do this, I should point out that this is coming from a, a piece of information put up on Reddit by a user, Cat the Human, who has very, very kindly transcribed the key, key points of this particular interview and put it onto Reddit for us. So I'll obviously link that post down below, and I will also link the uh, Twitch clip from the actual interview as well so if you guys want to watch it in a bit more detail you certainly can do that so the big things we have the next patch will have steel dawn as an introduction of the brotherhood of steel next month so we already knew this it was in the uh, roadmap and it's likely to come probably sometime october onwards judging by the way they're describing things at the minute it looks like they're considering september to be part of the summer which is optimistic i think <laughs> but uh, that's the way they're working so We've got the next patch, it's going to have things like, hopefully, legendary perks and a few other bits and pieces in it as well. Hopefully it'll also have the Worn Wasteland thing in it. But uh, the Steel Dawn stuff's going to come after that, so as I say, likely in October and midway through the second season of the uh, 76 Seasons thing. So that should be very cool as well. Yeah, so obviously our next big uh, content drop is going to be uh, centered around the return of the Brotherhood of Steel to Appalachia. What's, what's cool about that is the fact that um, this is a group that's coming from the west coast so they these are you know uh you know what, what you would kind of call the original brotherhood folks and they're they've traveled across america to return um and find out what happened but they also have their own uh mission agenda right um and so you're going to learn uh about you know some of the things that happened in their uh their trek across the states uh you're gonna you're gonna find out you know why they're here um and, you know, you're going to get to know these characters pretty well. You know, it's a very uh, character centric uh, beat. We have a lot of, uh, you know, really interesting characters and um, some, some drama there that's going to play out over the course of, of uh, you know, s several different beats. So. Plus, it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to have all the stuff you've come to know, not just quests, so armor, weapons, a uh, couple of, um, we call, we're calling them light allies, more people from camps, like, so all this stuff that folks loved about Wasteland is also going to be included in this, and we are spreading this out over several batches as well, so stuff will come as it's ready, and uh, it's going to be exciting. So, basically, it's an introduction to the Brotherhood of Steel. We know there's going to be some quests, it'll be the initial arrival of the Brotherhood of Steel in Appalachia who have uh, made their way from the West Coast, which is now confirmed. We kind of knew that anyway, because they weren't really anywhere else based on the existing law at this point in time. It's only 20 years after the, drums, the bombs dropped, obviously. So this is all coming on, and they are making their way across from the West Coast to Appalachia. They've got their own plans in mind. So very, very cool. Looking forward to jumping into the story. So that is um, the big thing that is coming in terms of the next huge content beat, and that will be in the autumn which is like, it's looking like being probably October at this stage. So, mod support is c coming and actively being worked on. 
Um, we are definitely still working on mod support. It's coming. It's it's what we term a heavy lift. The guy who works on it's a big weightlifter, and it is a heavy lift. Meaning we we've had to put a lot of resources into that, and there's a lot of it's it's not just uh, drag and drop from the previous games because of the way our client server architecture works. But it is coming. We're working on it, um, and that just stay tuned. They have actually mentioned this in some interviews here and there on occasion that kind of flew under the radar a little bit. Um, but yeah, they are continuing as they have been for quite some time to work on mod support in Fallout 76. They don't just, or rather they're not able to just port the same setup across from Fallout 4 because the launch is the fundamental setup, the, the nature of the game being an online game, um, requires a different approach to mods. Obviously, some mods are re relatively light touch. They've said in articles before that you know if you just want to have purple sky throughout the whole of Appalachia that's your business that's not a problem that's entirely your end but on the other hand if you end up putting different mods in for example let's go with say you're building your camp with assets other players don't have how do you deal with that obviously that's the sort of thing they have to address you know if a player turns up to your camp and you've built your house out stuff they don't have it might not be visible or it might be kind of visible and not interactable it might appear to be something that is in game or something that is part of the base game but then actually doesn't work because you haven't got the necessary files on your end to make it work there's countless issues with it of course the other side of things is um making sure they stay on the line of mods as opposed to cheats because obviously it's a shared world game they don't want people modding it in a way that has a negative impact on other players for example if you're claiming a public workshop and somebody strolls up to pvp challenge you and take it off you and that person is wielding a mini gun that shoots, min shoots mini nukes, you, they kind of have something of an unfair advantage. So obviously they don't want that. So balancing these things off is just some of the challenges they're having to work on. So it is coming. They've got a team working on it. As for exactly when, they, they're not ready to give any kind of more details yet, but it's good to know that it is being worked on. It's not been just kind of kicked under the carpet and forgotten about. It's, mod support is coming. Great. So... Display cases and updates to that. Um, we are working on uh, multiple options, that, uh, uh, actually. So we have, uh, we're looking at getting mannequins uh, so people can uh, put their outfits on mannequins in their camp and show them off. Uh, and then further out, we're exploring the idea of allowing players to display uh, their power armor in, in their camps. So. Uh, very excited about this. Uh, I know as a player, I want this. Uh, I have a lot of cool outfits and, and power armor uh, paint jobs that I'd like to show off in my camp. So, um, yeah, like definitely, definitely keen on, on getting these features out there. We kind of knew this was coming eventually anyway, but there's a little bit of extra confirmation. They are working on mannequins, so you can show off your armor, you can show off uh, outfits you've got and display those around your camp. They're working on that. They said it's coming. They also said it was coming a while ago, and for some reason it hasn't. Not quite sure what the ins and outs of that are. Presumably there are some issues that they're having to work out. Uh, same two of uh, power armor displays. They're working on a way for us to do that. Obviously that was the thing that came into Fallout 4 eventually, which is very, very cool. They're obviously working on a way to implement that and make it work in 76. Because as you guys know at the moment, you put your power armor down, unless it's on a power armor station and you're actively working on it, it makes its way rapidly back into your inventory. So but obviously power armor displays will have to work around that and not make that system screw up so that's just some of the stuff that they've got to work on with that but very very cool nice to know that we will soon be getting these display options so the camp building stuff which i know a lot of people are interested in and i've seen a lot of comments uh, sort of referring to this yeah we're also working on fallout shelters which hopefully will come this fall um they, those are going to be basically in a nutshell doors that go into instances in your camp that allow you to build more we're even experimenting with um, reducing some of the restrictions to the build rules, not just the budget, but the actual rules themselves. So players don't have to work on a grid so much. They can place things where they want. We're really excited for allowing people to sort of create their own environments and interiors. Because once you go into an interior, you have a lot more band. We have a lot more we can do because you're not affecting other players' games as much. So you can go nuts in there. We don't have to worry about edge case AI and uh, um, and frame rate as much concerns. So that's the plan. We've been working. They've been working hard on it in Dallas, actually. Fallout shelters, which they have mentioned before, that's the new instancing version of camps that they're working on. Basically, what Jeff Gardner has said to us here is that um, what it's going to work, you're going to build a specific item, which will basically be a door, and that will take you out of the main game world and into a 
specific instance that just applies to your camp, which is going to represent a huge jump in the scale of your budget. Within that instance, you'll be able to do a lot more because it won't impact other players' games, it won't impact the servers as a whole, so effectively you'll be on your own kind of micro server, which is cool. From the tone of it, it seems they are looking at expanding the budget generally as well. How much we can expect from this? I wouldn't recommend holding your breath on that. We might get a small increase in terms of our outside area in the world as it is, but I wouldn't expect a massive one because, as per usual, it's a weight of work that the server has to do. You know, you know what it's like with a computer. You ask it to do too much, it slows down. When you do that to a server, it affects everybody else as well. So getting that balance right is kind of a struggle. It's something they've been working on since, well, long before the game came out. So... That is one thing that I think will hold them back in terms of the outer world thing. But obviously, once you get into that instance, your Fallout Shelter, you will have a lot more flexibility. So that's very, very cool. I have also said in very good news, which is kind of the opposite of what they've been doing in the last week or two, particularly with the last patch, that they are working on increasing our flexibility and basically the word I'm using a lot at the minute, functionality of the camp system. So... At the minute, things snap together, they're very, very grid-based. It's kind of hard to force your way out of that. It's one of the reasons we've had uh, such issues with the changes they've made recently. It's because it limits what we can do. But they are actively working on going the other direction, the direction we want them to go, which is to allow us to do things we're not currently able to do without having to you know, try and break the game system, basically. Which is really cool. Hopefully we'll have new placement options, we'll be having a lot more flexibility in the building system. And from the way it was expressed, it sounds like this will be both outside in your camps as they currently stand and within the instances as well, which is really, really cool. Hopefully it'll mean they've got um, some really cool new details and new options available for us and a lot more flexibility. So fingers crossed on that one. They did say as well that they have a sizable team working on this sort of thing at the moment. Jeff Gardner has actually um, hinted way back in PAX, which is what, March, I think, that... Um, his own wife would basically crucify him if he if he let this fall by the wayside so it's very very cool to see that coming as well which is brilliant so it looks like the moving camps eventually in the direction we want to see them go it'll be an ongoing thing obviously the first thing is going to be fallout shelters the instancing stuff which is going to be a big change anyway but beyond that we should be getting increased flexibility over time as well which is wonderful to hear so again kind of stuff we knew about but uh, to have a little bit more detail is really, really good. So we've got some cool stuff to look forward to there, I think. So character slots. I know a lot of people have hit their maximum character slots, which I believe is five already. Um, and I'm a little frustrated because they don't want to delete characters in order to create new ones. They're not currently planning on adding more char character slots. They're kind of looking at it, but they're not expecting to do it, which is unfortunate. But they are working, obviously, as we know, to increase the flexibility of the characters you already have, i.e. perk card loadouts, and some of the changes they're making to legendary perks, which should be coming in September, are very, very cool as well. Because um, one of the big things they're doing is legendary special perks, in a sense that basically gives you the ability to have more special points. You'll still be capped out at 15, so for example, your strength won't be able to go higher than 15, but if you've got a character that, say, uses strength perception and luck for example i have builds that do that or agility and you want a few more points in endurance you'll be able to use the legendary perk system to basically open up some extra points up to the limit of 15 anyway within that particular perk uh, special attribute that you have not currently specced into so that you're able to add additional perks within there so your glass cannon might be able to get a little more survivability from some basically extra points to put into endurance for example that sort of thing. Or if your character's not particularly lucky but is um, a, something of a tank, you can throw a little bit more over the luck direction and get a little bit more benefit out of that as well. That sort of thing. So that's very, very cool. We kind of knew this already as well, but a little bit of extra explanation is good as well. So, leaping back to Brotherhood of Steel. So, as I said, Steel Dawn is coming in probably October. It's going to have the first part of the series of quests relating to the Brotherhood of Steel that will likely be delivered between October and March, that sort of period there, which is what, six months or so? Mm -hmm. Yes, six months. So it'll be an ongoing series of updates over the two major phases, Autumn and Winter. Steel Dawn is the, their arrival, their initial quests and setup and all of that stuff, getting themselves situated in Appalachia. That's where it's going to begin. And then it's going to move on to Shattered Steel in probably the new year. It's the winter, 
but they tend to work on three to four month rolling things anyway, so beginning of next year is the likely time for that. But we do know they are coming from the West Coast. It's centered around the original Brotherhood of Steel, which I hope means that they've got the attitude of Roger Maxon rather than some of his um, successors who were a little more mean. Um, Roger Maxon obviously being the guy who founded the Brotherhood and was generally a more positive guy, as we can see from the law already in Fallout 76, than his successors were who became much more isolated and insular. So it looks like that's probably the way they'll go, not least of all because it means they can interact with other factions more easily. It also means that um, if they are starting to trend in the other direction, that the, there's an interesting conflict that could come in there. So I'm speculating, obviously, but uh, hopefully that will have some very, very cool details in it as well. So there was a brief question on whether or not the game will be going free to play. The short answer to which is no. They're quite happy with how things are going. Um, they're still going to do things like free trial weekends or on the Xbox Game Pass at the minute, both PC and Xbox. So things like that are still going to be ongoing, but the game itself will not be going free to play. Um, major reason for that that they didn't say, um, reading between the lines, is it's an ongoing development process uh, and it costs a significant sum of money to do that. Obviously they have to pay their staff, they need to pay for the equipment, technology, yada yada yada, um, that sort of thing. Uh, they also have to pay Amazon a considerable sum of money, I'm sure, for the rental of their servers, which is because Amazon are providing the hardware that is the basis on which 76 is built, and they won't be doing that free of charge. It's not exactly uh, Bezos' MO, that. So, big expenses are continually ongoing with games like this, so they do need to rake the money in somewhere if we want the game to not just disappear, which I think most of us don't. So, that's the unspoken part of it, I think, is the honest... My, my interpretation of the unspoken part, anyway. So, I think that's the scenario. So, not going free to play, but obviously the current trends will be continuing. One Wasteland, which uh, I am very much looking forward to, they touched on, they didn't give us a great deal of detail, there's a few little bits and pieces here, but whilst, yes, they are planning on making it so that you can go anywhere at any level, and that the area you're in will scale better to your level, it'll also compensate you being in a group. If you've got a low-level player in a group with a high-level player, it'll find a balance in there. The exact ins and outs of how that's going to work, they're still a little tight-lipped on, which is a little worrying and not ideal given that One Wasteland is actually not that far away now. It's currently scheduled for September, so I wouldn't be terribly surprised to see it being pushed back a little bit. Maybe this patch will be a little later in September, which would give them about six weeks, but we'll see. The, the One Wasteland feature that we're building, we have a lot of uh, tuning knobs and things that we can do to make sure that things are, you know, don't always just immediately go to your level, right? So um, we still plan to make uh, the different regions uh, have different sort of challenge uh, ratings, if you will. So, you know, if you're a low level player and you go into the Cranberry Bog, um, it's things aren't necessarily going to come right down to your level. They're still going to they're going to come down to a certain level and, and clamp. Right. So it will still be challenging. Right. Um, that's we're very keen on that. We don't want everything to just always be right at your level. There's. And so we've, we've made sure to have a lot of controls and ways to, if we choose to, uh, set certain creatures to not, not auto level. The, the two things One Wasteland is setting out to solve are the, difficult, the, the sort of random difficulty spikes that players experience right now. Because the game is leveled to the person who sort of went to that zone first. I'm, I'm talking very vaguely here about sort of intricate systems. So sometimes you'll go into a zone and there'll be no problem for like a level 20 player. And sometimes you go in that zone and you're getting your butt kicked. And that's the thing we really want to solve. We want a more predictable experience, one. And two, we do want players of disparate levels to play together. And this is what this is doing. It is not going to all of a sudden make everything like milk toast or that is, trust me, no one on the team wants that at all. Fallout is about making hard choices and decisions and consequences in, in and in combat as well. I, I saw a post on Reddit the other day, you know, people that are uh, playing in public teams right now. You know, one of the one of the frustrations is that these public teams can have wide variety of levels. And yeah, if if uh, if you want to go to uh you know toxic valley and you've got a level five on your team and you've got a level 150 on your team you can do that uh so that's it's i, I think it's going to make uh our game a lot easier to play with your with your friends and and just you know like i said public teams so daily ops are a big thing that is coming in the autumn it's one of the 
Uh, I think again this might be scheduled for September, but it's one of the big updates that are coming. You guys will remember last year, probably most of you, that um, Vault 94 and the Vault Raids were released. The idea being it was high level group content. It did not go according to plan. <laughs> Unfortunately it was buggy and it was way too group centric in my opinion, but there we go, it is what it is. Um, they, Daily Ops are going to be their rework on that. So the idea is that first and foremost it will focus on Vault 94 as it was before. But they've basically redone the whole thing. It's going to be completely different. It's going to be a daily series of quests you can do in this particular location first. They're going to introduce other locations as well, like Vault 96, for example. So that will be a daily repeatable quest, which will be very, very cool. Hopefully it'll be interesting and fun to do and a lot more viable than the original Vault Raids were whilst keeping the locations, which is cool. But they're also going with a non-quest option so that these places will become explorable locations, much like any other as well as hosting these quests. So you'll be able to go in, look into the lore, have a poke around, see what's what, that sort of thing, as well as have these daily operations to run as well. So it's in all likelihood probably still going to be group centric. I think that's probably going to be the case. They have said in the past that they want to bring in more group focused content. So I would expect it to go that way, but uh, it should be very, very cool. Yeah, it's looking to be quite different to the old ones, but um, gives you the option to explore, do some daily content, and hopefully have a bit more meat to that daily content because obviously most of the daily content at the moment is just speak to this guy, go do this thing, come back again, end of. So um, same with the daily challenges as well to a degree. So hopefully this will be a bit more story centric, which will be really, really cool to have. We have our new daily ops feature that we're working on. Uh, we're going to bring back Vault 94 as part of a, a daily op location. Uh, so you'll get to go in and, and play through uh, this mission in Vault 94. It's a very different experience than the previous uh, incarnation, uh, but it's really fun. Um, on top of that, we're unlocking the vault location in the world. So now you can go into it and explore, you know, discover more of the lore uh, and really kind of take your time with it and, and, and see, you know, and learn more about it. Um, so that's we're, we're going to do that as part of the initial uh, release package for Daily Ops. Uh, in the future, we're, we would like to do the same thing for, for 96. So that basically covers most of the stuff out of this interview. As I say, I will throw the link to the full interview down in the description if you want to go and watch it. And I will throw a link to Cat the Human's Reddit post as well if you want to catch that. It's actually been hugely upvoted and is easy to find anyway right now. But if you're watching it in the future, you might want to refer to it. So I will link that down in the description as well. Thank you very much to everybody who's made the effort to bring this information out to us as well because it's been easy to miss this sort of thing. So I very much appreciate that. But for now, I do hope you folks found this useful and informative and got something cool out of this. If you did, please do hit those likes and subscribes. Very, very much appreciated. Social media links, channel memberships, and the merch store are all available via the description as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel in that way, it's hugely, hugely appreciated. So thank you very much to everybody who's done that already. And do join us on some of the live streams as well. As per, we're playing plenty of Fallout and playing Horizon Zero Dawn at the moment, which is long overdue for me. So looking forward to jumping back into that. I do hope you will join us for that. Now, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.